Hey guys, so I'm back again with another message from the Lord. On last night, I decided to go ahead and finish reading the book of Esther. Just something was just pulling me in my spirit to go ahead and read, finish reading the book of Esther. And God gave me another revelation when I got to chapter six. And in chapter six, this is where the king had honored Mordecai, right? Um, and I'm going to read, started it at the fifth verse, chapter six, verse five. And I'm going to read down to verse 12. And it says, so the attendants replied to the king, Haman is out in the court. Bring him in, the king ordered. So Haman came in and the king said, what should I do to honor a man who truly pleases me? Haman thought to himself, whom would the king wish to honor more than me? So he replied, if the king wishes to honor someone, he should bring out the king's own royal robes as well as a horse that the king himself has ridden, one with a royal emblem on its head. Let the robes and the horses be handed over to the king's most noble officials and let him see that the man whom the king wishes to honor is dressed in the king's royal robes or the king's robes and led through the city square on the king's horse. Have the officials shout as they go that shout as they go this is what the king does for someone he wishes to honor excellent the king says to Haman quick take the robes and my horse and do just as you have said for Mordecai the Jew who sits at the gate of the palace leave out nothing you have suggested so Haman took the robes and put them on Mordecai placed him on his own on the, placed him on the king's own horse and led him through the city shouting, this is what the king does for someone he wishes to honor. Afterward, Mordecai returned to the palace gate, but Haman hurried home, dejected and completely humiliated. When I was reading this and I was meditating on this, God gave me three points. The first one is, mm -hmm. your enemies are about to honor you. The second one is, your enemies are about to be put to shame. The third point is, your enemies you will see no more. Haman had plotted to kill Mordecai and the Jews because of his hatred, um, because of his rage, because Mordecai wouldn't bow down to him. All right? And... The way that Haman wanted to be honored, which was Mordecai's enemy, he had to honor Mordecai in that exact same way. All right. And when he had to honor Mordecai, it humiliated him and it put him to shame. So that's why God said your enemies are about to be put to shame. The third point he gave me, your enemies you will see no more. In chapter 7, Haman was executed. In chapter 7 of Esther, Haman was executed on the very same pole that he set up for Mordecai. I need for somebody to catch that revelation. The way that Haman wanted to be honored, he had to honor Mordecai in that same way. And the way that Haman wanted Mordecai to be killed was the way he was killed. Plot twist. And God is saying, "Your after they after they honor you, after they are put to shame, you will see them no more. You will see that enemy no more." All right. And it makes sense to why God has me in the book of Esther, um, because a lot of God's children, women of God are in um, their Esther season. And Esther was crowned queen in the season of Tevet, the Hebrew month of Tevet. Well, Tevet starts on December the 13th. So December the 13th is when Tevet starts. That was when um, Esther was crowned queen. But 
all of this backfired on Haman and the people that hated the Jews. Because Esther was able to expose Haman later on in chapter 7 about what he was doing and how he was plotting against her people. He was killed or executed on the pole that he set up for Mordecai. But a lot of people don't know that their hatred and their envy, it creates generational curses. And not only was Haman executed on the pole that he set up for Mordecai, his 10 sons that he bragged and boasted about was executed on that same pole that he set up for Mordecai. Mm -hmm. So his kids had to go through or suffer because of his own hatred. And those are generational curses that people create because their heart is not pure. But because these people are like this, God is clearly saying, your enemies are about to honor you. Your enemies are about to be put to shame and your enemies you will see no more. Um, while reading the book of Esther, I discovered that Esther has 10 chapters and I didn't even know Esther has 10 chapters, but Esther, the book of Esther has 10 chapters and 10 is the number of completion. It's another number of completion. So something is really about to happen in this upcoming season of Tevet. Whenever we get into it, um, the moving closer to it, um, but God is really about to start dealing with a lot of his children's enemies. All right. God in this book of Esther, not only was Esther able to help save the Jews, which was her people, her Jew, the Jews were able to conquer and overtake their enemies. The people that came and rose up against them, they were able to conquer them. They were able to kill them. A lot of a lot of people that hated the Jews was killed during the time of Esther. All right, because of the law that Haman tried to put in place, and then Esther and Mordecai put another law in place that gave the Jews the right to protect themselves against anyone that tried to come up against them and fight them and threaten them. So again, what God is saying in this hour is that your enemies are about to honor you, whether they like it or not. Your enemies are about to be put to shame because they have to honor you. And your enemies you will see no more. All right. So I just wanted to come and share this message. I hope this message was a blessing to you guys. Um, but stay encouraged, y'all, because God is really dealing with our enemies during this time, the warfare and stuff during this time, God is about to really start dealing with um, our enemies because God does not play when it comes to his children, all right? Another thing that dropped in my spirit, you know, King Saul was an enemy to David, right? He became an enemy to David. But then later on in the book of Samuel, David didn't have to deal with King Saul or Saul no more um, because he was no longer king. And then Saul ended up taking his own life by falling on his own sword. He ended his own life. So David didn't have to deal with that enemy no more. So just want to come and share that your enemies are about to honor you and they are about to be put to shame. And you are not about to see them no more. All right. But like again, like I said, y'all, I love you guys. I hope you guys have an amazing day. And I will chat with you all later.